I was thinking tonight about the present, this moment right now. The past is a memory. It's gone. Perhaps the past somehow persists, but uh, as far as my access to it, it's a memory. The future, again, is a thought. In some sense, the future may be predetermined, just like when we watch a movie. It's all determined and we just watch it, but I don't know that. For me, the future is just a thought. The real thing for me is here, right at this moment. This is real, this is reality. It's not a thought. And I think for me, it's something I'm trying to practice more lately, to be conscious and aware and more present than I often am. I've spent a lot of my life thinking about the future and uh, the past, not being fully present. I remember in high school, I used to go to dances on Friday night. And sometimes I felt like the space between, let's say, Thursday and Friday was just wasted. I, I wished I could just throw it away and get right to Friday night. And a lot of my life, I, you know, you work, I worked in an office and it can be rather boring working all day. And you really just kind of want to, or I wanted to kind of forget where I was, just go on automatic and do my work, but not be fully conscious of where I was. And perhaps some people have had trauma and can't be fully in the present. Maybe it's painful. But I think for most of us, or at least for myself, I wish, uh, I, for most of us, I think it might be good to try to be more fully in the present. And I wish for myself that I had been more fully in the present. Now, I wonder if the following is true. If we are beings that are in some sense meant to live in the present, certainly our, our ancestors, animals, lived in the, live in the present. And so the whatever we descended from probably lived in the present. So if that's in our makeup, but for whatever reason, we find ourselves dwelling on the past or thinking too much about the future and ignoring the present, perhaps that creates a feeling of dissatisfaction. Perhaps it's not that our present situation is boring, so we'd rather not be fully present of it. Perhaps it's that we're not fully present in the here and now, and maybe that's why it sometimes seems boring and uh, uninteresting and not attractive. It's interesting that some moral values seem to be uh, helpful to living in the present. Um, if I'm honest, I don't have to worry about people accusing me, people trying to uh, take me to court or something. If I forgive, then I don't find myself dominated by rage, thinking about what I'd like to do or what I could have done or what I'm going to do. Because so that's all past and future. And to be in the present, maybe it's helpful or even necessary to be able to forgive. The idea of not being greedy is that a greedy person almost by definition is unsatisfied. They never have enough. And so that feeling want, feeling desire for something you don't have is a way of subtracting from the present. There was a famous book years ago, Be Here Now, and the title basically says it all uh, as far as being in the present, although, of course, it had a, a lot more to it. Now, what happens when we're in the present? Well, lots of things, but I'm going to talk about uh one of the highest things that can happen and then work my way down so let's imagine the sun in this analogy is the uncreated light is god his ultimate ground of existence and 
Well, suppose that most of us or all of us can't look directly at the sun. And that would be similar to the idea that a intense direct experience of God might be too much for most people. But we can be in God's presence in the sense that we can be in the sunlight. And when we're in the sunlight, we're happy. And above us is a clear sky, an infinite sky. But when clouds come and make our world dark, is like when we stop being in the presence of the uncreated light and withdraw within ourselves. Now, under clouds, the earth is, seems very small and the sky seems very close. And the idea that you can imagine a person who has cut themselves off from that sun and they feel that their world is small and close and dark. It's cloudy. They miss that radiance, that energy, that light. Some people, I think, are better at staying closer to the light than the others. There's a man I met about 47 years ago. I met him for a sum total of about 10 minutes. And I still remember him. Um, I was working in Philadelphia and taking the train. And on the way back, I got off the train and there was this man standing on the train platform. We'd just gotten off the train, an elderly man. And he's looking around and I don't know whether he asked me, he spoke first or whether I asked him if I could help him, but he, he needed a ride from the train station. So we, we got in my car. And he was telling me about himself. And he was something like a doctor who had spent uh, 40 years in Africa or something like that, helping poor people who needed a doctor. And of course, he could have practiced in the United States and earned a very, uh, probably a much higher salary and been much wealthier. But I remember he was, he was vibrant. He was full of joy. And when he talked about what he had done, he seemed that it gave him a great, great deal of satisfaction. And he seemed very happy and very uh, bright. And um, the ride lasted whatever, five or 10 minutes, and I dropped him off. And that was that. Never saw him again. But I remember him. And I think that he had lived a life in the, more in the presence of uh, the sun than probably I have. And uh, but I'd like to kind of make up for that now. I also mentioned in another video, there's a book called The Practice of the Presence of God by a man named Brother Lawrence, who was a monk about, I believe, 400 years ago. And uh, that also talks about this, uh, being trying to be present, fully in the present. Also, I heard something. I tried looking up on the internet. I couldn't find validation. But what I heard was years ago, there was this practice among some monks that throughout the day, anyone could say uh, four or five monks are working in the kitchen or something. Any one of them could uh, shout at any moment, stop, or some other word. But the idea was they were to stop what they were doing and reflect on how present they were in the moment or if they were outside of the present. And I also remember I went to a, a meditation retreat once. It was a Buddhist style meditation retreat. And we sat on cushions for 45 minutes, I think. And then we did a walking meditation for 15 minutes. And so we'd get up and the instructor said, stand and turn towards the wall because the walking was around the edge of the room. We were sitting in the center on our cushions. So we'd stand, we'd turn to our right or left, walk to the edge of the room, and then we'd begin to walk. And we're supposed to think as we move the foot, lifting, moving, placing, shifting. So I'm lifting my left foot, I'm moving it, I'm placing it on the ground, I'm shifting my weight. I'm lifting my right foot, I'm moving it. 
I'm placing it on the ground, I'm shifting my weight. And so we did this for, it was a, uh, a meditation class that went on for a few days. And about the third or fourth day, oh, and then when we were finished, after we did 15 minutes of walking meditation, the instructor would say, stop, and we'd stop. And I should say, locate in your mind where your pillow is mentally. And then, okay, now start, turn, and walk towards the pillow. And so that would happen each day. And about the third or fourth day, after we had done that, and we sat down, she said, now I want you to reflect on this. When you were walking around the room, it was aimless in the sense that you were just going to walk until the walking meditation was over, which is a kind of goal, but no immediate goal. But when she said stop and then walk towards your pillow, did the walking change because there was a goal? Where you lessen the present because you're thinking, ah, there's the pillow and your mind is already there, even though your body isn't. And so that was uh, that Buddhist meditation class I took was trying to teach mindfulness, I believe the words they would use, mindfulness of the present as a virtue. I haven't done this enough to, from my personal experience, say whether it makes a huge difference in the person's life or my life or makes a somewhat of a difference. It has made a difference. I, I can say that. But whether it is just the mild improvement or whether it someday leads to uh, nirvana or enlightenment, I, I couldn't tell you. Thanks for listening.